Hello. Hello. Hi, Rose. Is this Rose? Yep. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? Well, you're going to be helping me with my program today. Yep. Awesome. I think I'm all set. I have a slide presentation. Mm -hmm. um, and then towards the end, I'm going to go into show a demonstration and illustrator. Okay. Um, I may, I, I can, I can see the chat and I can see the participants, but if you want to take over, um, the chat, if anyone has questions and if anyone needs to be admitted, um, during the program, that will be awesome. Yep. I can do that. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Once we're ready to actually get started, I'll stream it to Facebook. Okay. Um, do you know how many people have signed up? Uh, let me see if we have registration for this one. I don't think we do have registration since this one was set up as a Zoom meeting instead of a webinar. Mm. So we will see. Okay.
All right, so it's three, it's three o'clock now. Um, did you want to start now or wait a couple minutes to see if people join in? Um, I guess we can wait, wait um, like three minutes and see okay. since we're sure there was registration and then we can start and stream to uh, Facebook. Okay. Rose. Yep. Are you able to see Facebook while it's streaming in case yeah. there's like you are? Yep. Okay. So I'm going to put Zoom in a window that's not quite the full full screen and then have Facebook open in another window so I can watch the chat on that. Oh, okay. I'll try to get it on my phone to see if it comes up when it comes. <laughs> One more minute. We can start. Okay. okay. Well, will I, just a minute while I get the stream going. Sure. It seems I am able to do that because I'm a co-host. Uh, and since you went in first, you're the host. Could you make me host so I can get the stream up? Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Hey. Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to Design Your Own Logo. I am Saressa Newsom, Creative in Residence at the New Haven Free Public Library, Ives Squared um, at Ives Main Library. 
Um, so today we're gonna just go over some tips on how you can create a professional logo for your business. Um, depending on how elaborate your logo is, you can really do it all on your own. Um, so we'll get started. Okay, so as I mentioned, I'm Saressa Newsom, creative resident, creative in residence here at I've Squared. Um, I am a creative. I am a fashion designer by trade, and I love creating and making with my hands. So I'm always learning different things. Um, I am also an entrepreneur. I launched my business, Endangered Stitches, during the pandemic where I had to innovate and do a lot of things on my own. My logo is right here for Endangered Stitches, which I've created on my own. Um, when I was developing my business, I was trying to find someone that can make a professional logo for me. Um, I looked at Fiverr, uh, which is a site where you can hire someone to do creative work for you as well. And one of my friends said, Sarasa, one of my friends from grad school, she said, you can do this on your own. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes it takes someone to push you to um, try something different. Um, so I'm just going to go through the process today to show you that you can create your own professional logo and give you all the tools to get started. And remember, remember, I am a creative, I am creative in residence, I'm an entrepreneur. Not once did I say that I'm a graphic designer, okay? <laughs> so you don't have to be a graphic designer. And there's so many ways to do the same thing. Um, so you can, you know, there's other resources, YouTube, you can do a web search to find out different ways um, to do the same thing. So keep that in mind. So we're going to first start with the process, what you need to keep in mind when, when planning your logo. Also, we're going to go over some resources that may be helpful. And then finally, we're going to actually show you a design in Illustrator. So the first step in the process is research. You have to do a lot of research to make sure that your, um, your logo is the right fit for your business. Then you will put your ideas to paper and then you'll create. So when you're researching, you have to research your target audience. You have to look at colors. There's color theories. There's um, different meanings behind different colors and fonts. Some people don't have font um, text or type in their logos, but if you do, some people only have type copy text um, in their logos. So those are different things you need to research before you decide to move forward. So when you're considering your target audience, something to look at is what other stores or um, does your target audience support? You know, is your uh, target audience a Starbucks customer? Does your target audience like to eat fast food? Do they go to McDonald's over Burger King or Wendy's? So you have to look at these logos because these, the, the the businesses, they thought about this when developing their logos as well. So it could give you some insight on some details that you would like to maybe include in your logo. Would you like to have a circular logo? Would you like to have a logo that has red in it? Um, is it only type? Um, John Deere, you know, is, is it some outdoorsy thing? Is it construction? What is your target audience interested in? So this would really help you narrow down the elements for your logo. Another factor is color theory. Different colors mean different things. So if you look at this color wheel here, 
black mystery death if you have a um a business that caters to families young kids maybe like um a rental for um like a play space do you want your logo to be black or do you want it to be yellow happy so here's a bigger uh, view do you want it to uh dictate you know growth green trust uh purple royal magical pink calmness optimism so these are things that you need to think about when you're thinking about colors for your logo and you can um, search online for different um, different examples of this color wheel, color theory. Um, and simply, if you have something, if you want your logo to be happy, colors that relate to happiness, you'll just do that search and you'll get a lot of information from that. Hello, thank you for joining us, everyone. <laughs> so fonts. Font, if you're if you're including type in your logo, extremely important. Some people like to like the way script and cursive looks, but sometimes is it may not be legible. So you got to think about it. Um, you maybe want a serious font, and maybe it's a corporate um, type of business. You want something more straightforward. Maybe you want something more playful. So these are things you have to consider as well. So the next step is putting your ideas to paper. As I mentioned, I'm no graphic designer, but I can doodle. I can draft certain things and this is not a great image but i managed to scan in some of my drafts that i drew um when developing my personal logo for my business endangered stitches so endangered stitches we teach knitting crocheting and sewing so i knew that i wanted to depict the three different um crafts knitting sewing and crocheting so when you think of sewing machine you think you think of sewing you think of a sewing machine you think of stitches when you think of knitting you think of yarn knitting needles the same for crochet you think of the crochet hook you think of yarn and i wanted the name endangered stitches because that is a very important aspect of my business because stitching sewing knitting these different crafts are i consider endangered because they're not being taught as widely as they were when we were younger or when our parents were younger so that's why i started my business so i have two different versions here one of them is really hard to see so it has the copy the text endangered stitches on the bottom arched up with a stitch around connecting. And you have the knitting needle, the sewing machine and the crochet hook represented. And the other one, which is more close to what my final logo ended up being, um, you have endangered stitches curved on the top. You have the knitting needles crossing each other. You have a spool of thread and a ball of yarn. So, and you also have a sewing needle. So there, in that one, you don't have the sewing machine, but you have the sewing needle. So these are just, just me playing around, doodling, and um, trying to figure out what works best for me visually. So that's a part of your putting to paper. You don't have to be a grand artist to do this. And you can even, you know, have someone else do it for you. You know, if you have know someone that can draw, tell them your ideas. Um, but I think it's better for you to do it yourself. So this was my final logo. The knitting needles crossing with the crochet hook in the middle. It kind of resembles a phoenix, right? And then you still have the ball of yarn and um, the spool of thread. 
some resources that I use, and there are tons of others um, for fonts to get free fonts, dafont.com. Um, and the icons that you saw on my logo, I'll go back, the knitting needles, the crochet hook, uh, the yarn, and the thread, those were all taken from um, flat icons, okay? So you can download icons and you can edit them as you wish, excuse me, for free. And Noun Project is another site where you can get icons, okay? If you have any questions, please type them in the comments, in the chat, and we can answer as we go. So I, I know a little bit of Illustrator. I'm a fashion designer and I use it to design um, garments. So that's the platform that I use for my logo design. Um, then there's also Canva. There's a lot of other resources as well, but these I think are relatively easy. Canva has a whole logo suite, but I believe that comes with the paid membership. And there are some things that I dislike about it because you don't have full autonomy and flexibility um, when creating your logo. If you want a logo uh, image without a background, it's hard to achieve that in Canva. Okay, so I am going to stop sharing and we're gonna go into a, um, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how I can create a logo and illustrate it and go through some of the steps and some of the things you may wanna look out for when designing your logo. Okay. Does anyone have a specific logo that they have in mind? that maybe we can work on here. It's gonna be really brief, you know, nothing too elaborate, but just to give you an idea. So I'm starting up my Illustrator right now. We have um, access to Illustrator at the Free Public, at the Ives Square, Ives Main Library. So if you don't have Illustrator, you can definitely access it there and if there's usually someone on staff that can help you if you don't know how to use Illustrator. Give me one minute, please. Okay, I'm gonna share again. Okay, so I have Illustrator up. I'm going to create new and I'll do a custom size, four by four. You know, usually logos don't have to be that big unless you're creating one for a big logo, um, for a big banner. Um, so let's say four by four. Um, so here it's asking, you know, the raster effects, 300 PPI is fine. CMYK color is generally when you're designing for print. RGB is for web. So when you develop a design using RGB color, it may look great on the screen, but when you go to print it, it's not, it may not be the same color. So we're gonna stick to CMYK. We're gonna create. Okay. How do you get onto I squared? So I squared is the at is a space. It's a creative space at the main library downtown in New Haven. So you know you can come in and connect with anyone there. All right. So we're starting with a bank. Yes. Uh, oh, okay. You're in New York. <laughs> Thanks for joining all the way from New York. Um, so we have, I'm going to create something similar to my logo design. So it had a circle around it. So we'll start with the circle or let's do maybe, yeah, let's start with the circle. 
So we create, we select the circle tool and I'm gonna hold down shift and draw a circle so that it's equal or around, all around and it's not an ellipse. So I have my circle. I can go and change the color to whatever I want um, using at the, sorry, <laughs> using the colors tools. Oh, it's blocking me by my Zoom window. Okay. I'm just gonna select a color, but as you are creating a, if you're creating a logo for your business, you should already, you know, once you go through the color there, you should have a color palette that you're using. So I use like yellows and orange and there's a specific uh, color code for those colors. So you wanna be consistent. But right now I'm just gonna create a random, use a random color. I like this and realize it filled in the circle with this color, but we don't want it as a fill. We want it as an outline. So we're gonna go over here and we're gonna remove the fill and we're gonna change the outline to the pink instead. So I'm gonna go to this arrow and switch it out. And then the fill, I'm gonna take it away by going to that box with the diagonal red line. So I can also change the weight of this circle by going to a stroke weight. So I'm going to increase it to make it a little thicker. So I changed it to about three, three points. Okay, so let's see. I want to add, hmm, I'm thinking of a icon to probably use. Can anyone think of an icon? Uh, a fork? See. What was that? No, I Is said a fork, like a fork. A yeah. fork, okay, thanks, Bay. We're gonna look for a fork. I'm gonna go here and go to uh, flat icons. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna search fork. So you get all of these different images of forks, forks and spoons, forks and knives, plates. So you got to think about, do you want a fork that's outlined, even though once you select one, you can edit it in Illustrator. But let's say we want this fork, it's interesting. So we're going to download this fork, download. Free download. Oh, oh um, I, we're, I'm looking at your Illustrator screen right now. Yes. Oh, okay. sorry. That's no, okay. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> New share. Okay, there you go. Okay. Okay, so this is what I did is this is flaticon.com and I just searched fork. So what I did was I selected this fork and downloaded it. So I'll download it again just so you can see how easy it is. Oh, something went wrong. Downloaded it. And then we're gonna go back into Illustrator. And we're going to we're going to place the fork into this document, into this file. So downloads fork. And we're gonna place. Okay, so here's the fork. We're gonna place it wherever we want. It's rather huge. So we're gonna resize it. 
So I'm gonna hold shift while I resize it. There's other ways as well. You can go to object transform and scale in Illustrator. This looks a little texture. Okay. So this is a roster image. It's just a solid image that we can't do anything to. So in order to be able to edit where you can change colors, you are going to expand it. So it's object, image trace, make and expand. So you see that? So now it has a little white background. We're gonna remove it by selecting the um, direct selection tool. And we're just gonna select that white space on the outside of the fork and press delete on your keyboard. So now you should just have a fork shape that you can change up. Oh, I see some more white. So now you have a shape that you can change the color on the inside. So let's see, what color do we want this fork to be? Not black, anything but black right now or white. Um, let's see, we're going to do this nice blue, pretty. So you can change the colors. If you want to you know, change the direction of the fork, you just transform it, okay? If you want two forks, you copy and paste. So that's so easy. So now if you want, let's say you want a dotted line on the, on the outside. So you created another circle, the same way you hold shift and you create your circle and automatically, automatically fills it with the last color, but we don't wanna fill. So we're gonna change the fill. And we'll keep the blue outline. And down to stroke, we are going to create a dash line. So you go down to stroke and select dash line. So now I actually like this, but if we want to change the space between the lines, so the dash is 12 point, we can change the gap to, let's see what two looks like. Two and 12. Okay, so that didn't do much, but you know, this is something you can play around with and see what you like. Okay, that looks a little smaller. Okay, so the next thing is copy text. So let's say we're gonna do, um, does anyone have an idea of a business name? Any text you want to add okay i'll think of something all right now i am back to my web browser searching so we are going to go to um the font.com and here is where they have so many different fonts outside of the traditional fonts. People make these and they put it here so to share. So it's saying, uh, okay. So what's good about this is that you can put in the words that you are looking the, for the font for and it'll show up as the example. So you get a live view of what that word will look like in that font. And then you can download it and use it. So let's see, where's the search for? that Okay, no, that's not what I want. Let's just okay. So here it is. Work city. 
So you can see what that word will look like in this font. So this is hello, Virginia. I actually like this. Um, so I am going to download it. Okay, so I'm just gonna go back to give you a preview of all, let's see. all of the other examples. There's so many, we won't get through them all, but just so you can get an idea of all the different fonts they have on the font. So you can go as crazy, you know, Red Christmas, as crazy as you want, or as simple as you want. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to Illustrator. Actually, no, we have to, we have to install our font. So we are going to, hello, Georgina. And you're going to double click it and it's going to come up. And there's two different ones. So this one, we just go install. And it's going to install, depending on what operation system you're working on, the form, the process may be just a little different, but it's the same idea. Hi, um, I'm looking at the screen of the fonts. Um, yes. Oh, where, what did it look like to um, uh, download? Sorry. Oh, so it's it's downloading like any other file. So you just collect, select download and it'll go to your downloads folder on your, on your computer. So when you go to download, you just select it and a window will come up to allow you to install. Oh, got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. No problem. All right. So now I'm going to go. My font should be there already. I trust that it's there. <laughs> so I'm going to type in Fork City. And then the font is George. I believe it was John Georgina. So, no. It should have come up in recent font. Maybe I have too much going on. Okay, let's see. Okay, here it is, Georgia. Is was it Georgia? <laughs> Regular. Yes. No, it was it was hello, Georgina. Is there. Okay, here it is. Hello, Georgina. So that's the font we downloaded. And the font size, I'm going to make it a little bigger. Maybe I want it to go across the, the utensil. Maybe make it a little bigger. Okay, so these are different things you can do. So to do the curved font, 
it's simple. There's different ways. Um, the easiest way I find is to create a path. So I'm gonna just copy one of these circles, paste it, and I'm gonna make it larger because I want I want the text to go on the outside because the inside is too busy. So let's say, okay. So I'm going to make it a solid line. It doesn't matter. And I'm going to add text. Um, okay, so I'm going to create where I want the text. So I want to curve text outside of this um, original design that I created. So I'm gonna create the circle that I want the text to outline. And I'm going to uh, object. Uh, path. Oh, no, sorry. I'm going to create the text on a path tool. And so that's this one. It's the text and then it's a squiggly line. Text on the path tool. And then I'm going to click on the path that I want to create the text. So it's just automatically going to fill in some type of text, the uh, Latin text, because um, that's what my settings are set for. So I'm going to put NYC, let's say. So it typed it upside down. So I'm going to go into my type options, type on path, and type on path options. So here, you can change the way that NYC looks. So right now, it's uh, set on default to rainbow baseline and um, the spacing is just automatic. So I'm gonna preview and flip it. So now it's right side up. These are different options. Gravity and rainbow seem to be very similar for me. Um, skew, you know, it will skew it. 3D ribbon will make it look like a ribbon. Stair step will stagger it. So we're gonna go back to rainbow. Okay. And then what we're gonna do, because I don't want it on the side, I want it in the center on the bottom. So I'm just gonna turn this around until it's placed where I want it. Yep, it's a little too far over. And then maybe I want it, a little smaller. So I'm just gonna change the size here. Move it again. So <laughs> that's our logo that we created. So there's so many things you can do in Illustrator. You know, we use the fork, we change the font, we use different colors, we use dashed lines, we use solid lines, we use shapes. Um, you can do all of this and you can just use text without all of the other art. So um, that's it, you can do it. Any questions? You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. So feel free to come off mute <laughs> if you want. Um, I hope that you got what you came here to receive from this program. Um, design your own logo. We have other programs in December. There are they're going to be in person, but since I know there's someone all the way from New York, we'll try to consider doing more virtual um, programs. Two from New York. 
It's two. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm I'm from New York myself. <laughs> so I appreciate that. Oh, you were spreading the New York energy. Thank you so yes. much. This is good. You're welcome. Someone who isn't a designer, but you want to create good looking products. So inspiration comes from all over. Um, if I'm going to start a design I you know I look at what other people are doing um you know from real life sometimes I can see a coat someone has on and it automatically I get ideas in my head but you know that comes from I guess being a designer and being creative naturally but you can always look in magazines look and see how um people are using color together um different textures I don't know I just you can get inspiration from anywhere from artwork um visual performing arts you know different movements depending on how things connect with each other they form different shapes so I hope that helped <laughs> I have a question. Um, thank yes. you for that demonstration. But um, you're finished with making the logo. Now you want to download it or put it somewhere. I mean, I, I, I'm assuming that you have to make that all one um, file or I guess group it together. Yes. And then so that's a good question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let me go back and go over that. Because that's what my problem is. Like, I, I have a problem um, preparing it Packaging now it. for what yep. I want it to do. Right. Yep. So that's good. So generally, you can expand it and turn it into a roster image. But we're not going to do that. Um, it's fine the way it is to group it you would just highlight everything object and group so that just groups everything so that if you move one thing it moves everything so you're not just moving the the copy you're not just moving the fork everything moves together when you're going to save it there's different ways you should save it you should save it as a jpeg you should save as a png because a JPEG will save it um, with the background, but realize this file that I created, it doesn't have a background, which I probably would do it with the background because if you're gonna use it for something else, you'll see whatever background, see, so. Um, let me see. Yeah, but if you wanted to say make a, like a letterhead. Yeah. So if you want, right. So if you want a letter letterhead and it's a white paper, it, it wouldn't matter. But okay. if I have like a back black a black background, you can't see the logo because it has black copy or mm -hmm. black text. Sorry. So now I take away the background, you can see it fine. So those are some things you do need to consider. So I'm happy that you you're asking these questions. Um, and then to save it, you go to file export, save as, and you can save it as a JPEG or you go to file export. This is probably the best, save for web. So this is where you get different options. So now you can see that the background is transparent and it gives you options here to save as a high res JPEG, which would be the best option because you don't want to, your logo to start getting pixelated. Although we did a, a four inch file. So this logo is probably about two inches. Um, so high res is always best. Mm -hmm. uh, PNG, you don't have a background. Um, and then if you want to use it, because I've used my, my logo is, pretty high res, but if I save as a PNG, if I go and do like, I wanted to do like a screen printing and the pro software that I use for that, it didn't, it, it, your logo needs to be very sharp. And it was not picking up every detail 
of my logo. So for that, I would change, I would just save it as an illustrated file or as an EPS. And those would be the best um, quality to use for like a print printing something from a computer that has those capabilities to print from an illustrated file or um, an EPS, you know, those type of files. Okay. All right. Thank you. And I can just, once I get it to where I want it, I can just resize it however I wish. Exactly. So now that it's grouped, I can just click it and it collects the whole thing. So I go to object transform and scale and I can make it, you know, 200, um, you know, and it's still good quality. It's an illustrator file. So Okay. But if Thank you if you save it as something else, it'll be hard. It it's not a good idea to scale it from another format. Does that make sense? Like if it's a JPEG, mm -hmm. you you don't. It's not a good idea to scale it up from the JPEG. You should always go to your original file to scale it from there. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? I've got a comment actually. So as you mentioned, yes. um, in I've squared, people can use um, our computers to use Adobe Illustrator or any or any other uh, Adobe Creative Cloud uh, software. But for people who can't get to the library, I've put together a document of different alternatives for Adobe software uh, that is free or cheap to use. So I've put a link to that in the chat. And you're welcome to look at any of those to find alternatives for making vector graphics. You're the best, Rose. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? I really enjoyed sharing this information with you all. Um, for those that, that are local to New Haven, I have office hours Monday and Thursdays. So if you ever need help designing your logo, I'm there and I can help you. Um, I also have, well, I have in-person or virtual hours. So if you want to reserve my office hours um, on the Ave Square website, I can, I'm happy to go over it with you. We're we're good on time. So <laughs> if there's no other questions, we'll close out. We have um, some programs in December. We're doing crochet, back to basics crochet. Um, we did a program in October and there was a lot of interest. So everyone's asking, what are we going to do it again? So we are going to do it again, Friday, December 3rd at three o'clock. And then there'll be an introduction to knitting class. Uh, December 9th, three o'clock. Um, and we're going to do vision boarding Monday, December 13th. We're going into a new year. So we want to put our all of our goals down and make it visual um, so that we can manifest our goals um, and achieve them. Um, hand sewing. I do teach sewing and hand sewing is one of the um, courses that I start with in all of my programs because it's important um, to know how to hand sew and it's great for alterations, um, mending, and some decorate, some fabric decoration. So those are going to be the December programs. And um, my email is creative at nhfpl.com. Dot org. If you have any questions or want to follow up, if you have um, a design or something that you've been working on and would love feedback, I am here, creative at nhfpl.org. Thank you for joining us today. All right. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for being here. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye -bye. You're welcome.